problem. Well, hi Angela, and thank you very much for joining us today. Um, we have been working with you for, well, over the last year really, and I just wanted to get the opportunity to maybe just get a quick chat with you and for you to share some of your knowledge with our early year students and our wider community. So Angela, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself and maybe your journey in early years, please? Yeah, sure. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching this video about um, me and my background here in uh, early years. So, yes, um, my journey working in the early years goes way back. I'll not tell you how far back, but I will give you some insight. So basically, I started off doing my BTEC National um, diploma at Southwest College back in the day when it was called for Manor College so I'm actually from Enniskillen so that's where I did my BTEC and really really enjoyed it honestly it was the best two years um, of actually my education career I really really loved it I love the fact that it, you know we have the practical element as well as the theoretical as well and then um, after I studied my BTEC, I went over to England to study and I actually did a degree in sociology. Um, I decided to not go in uh, straight away as a teacher because I wanted to try something different before I became an early years teacher. So I actually worked in marketing and sales in London for quite a while. Then I decided to do my PGCE in primary years and I focused on the early years um, then. And after that, I moved to Hong Kong and I've taught in international schools here in Hong Kong. I've taught in the local government schools here in Hong Kong as well, in early years and in primary and also in secondary schools too. And now I am a lecturer in the early years department for Education University. Fantastic. And I'm sure my colleague Ruth, who um, taught you at the time and who's still at Southwest College will be delighted to hear that you really enjoyed your time with her at Southwest College, so that's fantastic. Absolutely, she was a fantastic teacher and mentor for me, absolutely brilliant. That's brilliant. So you're now in Hong Kong, um, so could yes. you tell me a little bit as what do you see as influential to early years practice in Hong Kong then? Well, our early years uh, practice is slightly different from the UK and Northern Ireland. Um, in Asia itself, culturally, uh, the education system here is more academically driven. Um, so from a very early age, children go to pre-nursery. Now, pre-nurseries um, are predominantly run by private institutions, so private schools, and some international schools as well. Now, the local schools don't run the pre-nursery, so children would start pre-nursery from two years old, and that would be half day. So they get all sorts of activities, um, you know, which would also incorporate play as well, but there is a certain element of um, academic preparation as well. So when they um, go up to K1, um, you know, they're already starting to recognize letters, numbers, they're doing a lot of sort of like what we call homework here. I'm sure you're thinking, wow, you know, so kids at such young age doing homework, but it's to really reiterate what they've actually learnt um, in school and just to, because they're learning in a bilingual or trilingual environment. So there's actually a lot of them, a lot of languages to take in for such a young age. Um, so that would be, uh, a big thing here in Hong Kong, the academic structure. But many schools now are realizing that, you know, play is not the forefront of early years education. And that is something many kindergartens and preschools are really, really working hard on. And I know that working in the early years field here in Hong Kong, we can see there is, a, there's starting to be a, a shift towards play and towards high scope play-based learning. Um, it's still 
in slow progress um, because culturally, again, it is, as I said, academically driven, but um, it is, you know, they're trying to find a balance between the play and balancing it with the academia as well. It's been really interesting, you know, working with you guys and looking at quite a lot of the similarities. You know, it's not, I know that there are sort of big differences on the one hand, but actually when you look at the underpinning values and the underpinning principles, it, they're very similar um, from that yeah. point of view. So it's been really interesting to learn from one another. So can you yeah. tell me, do they follow any sort of curriculum in the early years? Is there anything in particular they, they work towards? Yes, we do have um, the what we call the Education Bureau and they have released the early years curricula. We call it the pre-primary curriculum and that curriculum is not as uh, intense or in-depth as the EYFS curriculum that you would probably find in the UK, in the mainland anyway. Um, and a lot of schools would sort of tweak to what they follow, if you know what I mean. Like some schools would probably be more um, play-based. Some would be probably driving the academic part quite um, heavily. It depends on the principal. It depends on the school. But yes, we do. Long and the short of it is we do have um, a curriculum. So, but how it is implemented is down to how the school is and what the principal wants and a lot of it is what the parents want as well and i suppose you know there has both positives and negatives of having that flexibility you know it's yes. very, it's been interesting looking at it together looking at what we do and what you do um and actually when i was reading the curriculum it was very it was very detailed and in-depth and quite play-based actually when you when you look at the curriculum that you follow. Yes. So, so obviously things are a bit different to our normal academic year. So yes. how have you had to adapt your teaching, Angela? You were sort of um, dealing with this long before us, you know, a good few couple of months before. So how have you adapted? Well, uh, well, I came back actually from um, a work sort of like a, a, a work um, trip in the end of January to hearing about COVID-19 and I was like okay what's going on so we, we I, I kind of came back during Chinese New Year so that was at the start of February end of January so it was kind of okay uh, we'll just wait and see what happens. I'm sure everything will be fine. And then, you know, we started to get a lot of emails come through saying that um, contingency plans have been put into place because COVID had um, obviously uh, hit Hong Kong and we started to get a couple of cases and more and more cases every day. So um, our government's basically said, right, everybody has to work from home. So our university had to think quite quickly as to how we are going to continue, uh, like the students can continue their learning. So we went online basically straight after our Chinese New Year holidays. So our Chinese New Year, New Year holidays ended um, on the second week of February. So we all went and used Zoom. So we had to quickly like teach ourselves and we had like a couple of workshops run by the university to, to sort of understand how to use this online platform. So basically we all went online. Um, I also did audio over PowerPoints as well and distributed those weekly to my students. Um, and I kind of did like more of a blended learning approach and I think the students have found that quite useful because they could go back to the PowerPoints, they could listen back to the audios and we kind of use Zoom as a, as a recap as to what they have learned from the PowerPoints that were distributed and we'd have some like group discussions, online discussions, I'd open up some forums for them. I even invited yourself to, to come on as a guest speaker. So Faye was absolutely brilliant. The students found it so interesting, um, learning more about the project-based approach as well from 
uh, it was good to see just a different face apart from my own, do you know what I mean? So it was really useful coming from um, an international teacher. So they find that really useful. So I think we've all been trying to work out different um, creative ideas and how to engage students during this time. Definitely. And I have to say it was, it, it's been quite a blessing from our point of view, you know, knowing you and seeing some of the things that you've been doing and, and learning from you being those few weeks ahead. And I really enjoyed sharing with the students and having that session with them. And it was amazing, actually, to think that we're all on lockdown and we're all within our own homes to suddenly get this opportunity to be teaching across the other side of the world you know it, there is and i suppose that leads me on to my next question so do you have any are there any changes you hope will come from this experience i definitely think that it's accelerated our um, need to use online and to kind of bridge that gap between institutions like i think it's been fantastic being able to have that opportunity to work with you guys mm -hmm. and it's kind of made us sort of right we've got to get this ball rolling i think we've had to think on our feet faster whereas i think if something like covid didn't happen we probably would have just oh well we can do something once a year or you know yeah. maybe just once per semester but now we know how easy it is to connect with each other i think lecturers and myself for sure i will definitely be using this opportunity to um you know collaborate with you guys more and it'll give us also the chance to collaborate with other universities in europe and perhaps in australia as well i think that is probably where our university will be moving forward from this the fact that actually it's not that hard to use of course we have to collaborate with timings and things like that but i think generally it's going to really put online learning in the forefront now I think that's really interesting because we certainly, you know, we've, we've been using technology in a range of ways, but it does sometimes feel like a bit of an add on rather than yeah. actually part of what you would normally do. And, yeah. you know, when we look at what we've done over the last year, it's, it's been quite easy to set up. And yeah. I do think people should use that opportunity more for that collaborative way of working together, you know, even even just within your own country, you know, and then the wider international perspective as well. And it's brought so much to our students and really made them think of what else is out there. So, yes, the, the only thing it can't do is um, I had hoped to come out to you next month to come and visit Hong Kong and yes. to come and work at your university for, for a week. Now, that's not going to happen, but I hope it will happen at some point. So could yeah. you just tell me what should I look forward to coming and seeing and doing in Hong Kong when I do eventually get there? <laughs> I hope it'll be soon, Faye, because we were really, really excited about having you come over because everything had been planned, everything had been set for you to give a series of workshops. Um, I think apart from the culture it is so different here from you know life in northern ireland night when i was living in enniskillen it was so quiet and you know shops close early and you know restaurants um is quite few compared to here where you know people are still out till midnight um families having dinner at eight nine o'clock at night shops are still open so it's a completely different um kind of pace of life probably very similar to london it's like the city that never sleeps but i think definitely um apart from the culture the food um and the environment itself is just so different we're so we're in such close proximity with with each other and you kind of you know this I, I was saying to you earlier about the whole social distancing thing you can't do it here which is why the whole mask thing was brought into into place it was like a permanent fixture for us because you just don't have the space here to have your 1.5 meter distance from somebody that is a real 
um, that's a real like pleasure for us. You know, it, it just isn't um, feasible here. But I think definitely also being able to see different range of schools for yourself, especially um, in Northern Ireland, I'd say you would probably have very few private schools or, mm-hmm. you know, we have so many different types of educational institutes here, like different types of kindergarten pay, fee paying government school we have the semi-private schools we've got the international schools and there are so many variations of curriculums that are used here in hong kong and i think you would find it really really interesting um from I can't that wait. <laughs> when i do i know when come out there then i am um, i'm really looking forward to to seeing you to see and you know meeting with the students and the team and just being immersed in the culture so um when i do get there expect lots of lots of walking and lots of visiting definitely absolutely a pleasure so so as for you then angela what have you sort of done any reflection what comes for you after this have you got any goals for, for this next period Well, I've been working at Education University now part-time and full-time. This is actually my eighth year working here. So a veteran Mm -hmm. (laughs) in the institution. Uh, I started in 2012 as a guest lecturer and I started full-time in 2017. And this sadly is my last year working at the institution. So um, I am going to be going back to part-time work uh, in September, but I will be still with the institution, but just part-time. And I've really enjoyed it. I've learned a lot and I've seen a lot of changes as well you know, and um, I've kept in touch with a lot of my students who are now my good friends um, Mm -hmm. from way back. And um, my goal now, I think once my, both my boys are in full-time education, Mm -hmm. I would in the future probably like to do my PhD, but I would like to do more work with ethnic minority communities here in Hong Kong. Um, Unfortunately, a lot of ethnic minority communities here don't get a huge amount of support from the government. And um, there are a lot of charities that are set up, you know, and our education uh, university also has a range of different projects that does you know help with the eth- ethnic minority children and their families as well so that is something I would love to to work on in the future so let's see um after June who knows world's my oyster as they say so well that's hopefully it. something and, will come uh, up I know, and certainly, you know, the plans are all changing so fast and so quickly at the moment. You know, it's, uh, yeah. there is so much opportunity, actually, and I think it's about making the most of the positive side of it that we can. Um, Absolutely. So I'm just going to ask you um, one more question. You, sure. We actually got in contact through um, my colleague that we have already spoken about, Ruth, who has been at the college, I won't say how long, but a little bit longer than me. Um, And she introduced us, which is where this whole collaborative work has has come from. So I just wanted to know, just looking back to when you were a Southwest College um, student, do you have any good memories or any highlights from, from then? Definitely. Actually, it's it's really funny that you've asked me this question because I was actually chatting to Ruth yesterday and um, we were going through some of, uh, the, you know, some really like good memories and some laughs and just chatting about the people who used to be in my class as well. Um, but definitely lots of good memories. I think I personally, um, leaving school and going into doing my BTEC national, it really, um, I think it really confirmed to me, this is really what I want to do. I really want to work with young children and I really flourished uh, during my BTEC because it really, um, I I think it was because I felt really comfortable in the environment. Uh, Teachers were really, really supportive, uh, especially Ruth at that time she was absolutely brilliant she was one of I would say she inspired me um, 
for my early years journey. And so she was at the, there at the beginning of it. She always encouraged me. And I think that's the one thing I have to say about Southwest College is the, the lecturers there have always been really supportive. And it was a lovely little community. We, we could have a laugh with them. Um, it used to be such fun good crack you know as they say back home good crack and um i loved i really really enjoyed my practicum experiences um working as an assistant in uh the enniskill and model primary school mm -hmm. worked in the special needs department for a bit and also helping out with p2s uh worked in a wee play group um which funny enough uh ruth's daughter was in at that time mm -hmm. when I was doing my practicum uh -huh. she was so adorable I was chatting to her about that yesterday and um, so yeah lots of really really happy memories and if I didn't have those really happy memories that wouldn't have inspired me to go on to do um, my my degree and then obviously my PGCE to train as a primary teacher so you know that's fantastic that's yeah, that was definitely the, the turning point after school for me. I thought, I, I honestly was really like, I didn't get the grades I wanted to, to get to do A-levels. And then I was like, right, what am I going to do with my life? So mm -hmm. it was the best decision ever. Really, really was. That's brilliant. And I'm sure, you know, if, if I was Ruth, I would be so glad to hear of a student that has found that as their, their starting block and at the beginning of their journey. And certainly... I have been at the college for about the same time as you've been at the university um, yeah. and Ruth was was a great support to me and still is very much so and she always full of energy and you can just see that transfer into the students that support and that kindness towards them uh, so she hasn't changed um, she's she's she hasn't <laughs> she's, fab. she's absolutely brilliant and any student who does get her is really really lucky and yeah. I hope they realize that she's um, absolutely fab she'll love yeah. this video for sure she'll, she'll think I know <laughs> I, told her. I was like you know I'm gonna be picking you up tomorrow so am What's I gonna get a dinner out of this <laughs> <laughs> Well, Angela, thank you so much for your time today. I just wanted to get a little bit of an insight and a chat with you because obviously we are all at home and we're not getting as many opportunities maybe to, to, to communicate with the outside world. So we're looking at different ways of doing it. And we certainly appreciate your time and for you joining us and for what the work that we've done so far as well. And we look forward to seeing where that takes us for the, the next stage of this journey. So thank you so much. Um, you're, you're now, so uh, you're probably now entering into night time and we are entering into afternoon classes. So, yes. we will, yeah, so we will look forward to catching up with you next time. Thank you so much. Definitely. Thank you. Thanks for having me.